Hello, my name is Russell Singer with the Avaya Serviceability Engineering Team. In this video, we'll demonstrate how to utilize the recording feature as an Avaya Aura Conferencing 7 user. This video does assume that Avaya Aura Conferencing 7.2 already has the recording feature globally enabled, as well as enabled for the user that I'll be utilizing to demonstrate these procedures. What we need to do first is access the Avaya Aura Conferencing Collaboration Agent and you will need to log in using a username and password in order to access the recording feature for your Avaya Aura Conferencing user account. Once you have logged in with your Avaya Aura Conferencing 7 user account, you should see a window similar to this with various options to access your library, various reports, as well as your actual conference. Now what I'm going to start off by doing is demonstrating how to enable the automatic recording feature for your conference. So for that what we'll do is we'll go to the upper right hand corner of that pop-up window for the collaboration agent and we'll click on the little gear icon there to access the conference settings. So these are the settings that actually apply to your particular Avaya Aura 7 conference. You'll notice at the bottom we have an option to enable or disable automatic recording of the conference. If this feature is enabled, anytime the conference starts, a recording will also begin of that conference. Now you do not need to enable automatic recording to enable recording for your conference. That can be done once the conference has already started. So we'll go ahead and click OK, and then we will access our conference by selecting the conference button from the collaboration agent. Now as soon as the first participant joins my conference, the recording would begin assuming I had automatic recording turned on. And you'll notice that as a participant joins my conference, in this case I joined it myself, because automatic recording was turned on, I see an indication at the top of that window that recording is indeed active for this conference. Now if I wanted to stop the recording for this conference for whatever reason, I can go expand the conference controls option near the top there and select the stop button from the recording menu there. And then of course if I wanted to restart the recording I could select the recording button again. Now this does record both the audio as well as the web collaboration. It does not record the video. And what I can do now is access the recordings that I have by ending the conference and going back to the collaboration agent uh, menu there where I'm able to manage my various conference settings as well as uh, as the recordings. So you'll see there that the bottom button is is labeled recordings and if I select that I see a list of all the recordings that I have for this user. Now once I look at my list of recordings I can do various things to manage these recordings. As you see there I can rename or delete any of these recordings in the list. I'm also able to see whether there was audio or web collaboration or both recorded with any of these and what the duration was as well as whether or not they're being shared. So I'll select one of my previous recordings and assume we want to share this with a group of individuals. I'll just click the share button down at the bottom there and you'll notice I have the ability to check that box that says share this recording. If I check the box that will enable a playback link. In other words, a URL that a user could click and access this recording. So I'll go ahead and check that box. And I also have the option to enable or disable the downloading of the recording from the playback link. Now if I click the playback link, what I can do is actually edit or customize the start and end time of that playback link. In this case, I don't really want to do that. There's no reason to. So what I can do is just click the copy link button and that will automatically put the link in my clipboard and I can paste that into an email or document whatever it is and send that off to my coworkers so that they can access this recording. Just make sure that you click the OK button here to make sure and save the playback link option as well as the, the share option. And you'll notice once you have saved the share option that the little check next to the recording under the shared column does appear now. So that, so that shows you that users could access that link and view this recording. When they access it, it actually uses a flash player, so it is important that the user accessing this link does have Adobe Flash installed on their PC. Now if I want to view the recording myself, again I have the option to open or download it from this 
management interface here. And if I click open, I am presented with a flash player that allows me to view and hear the recording. You'll notice that down at the bottom of the recording window, I would also see a list of participants. Um, I can see events associated with those par participants in the timeline, things like if they drop and, and join, uh, also if they were, um, if they started sharing their desktop or uh, typed in any type of comment or message in the, the web collaboration window, I would be able to see that information appear in the timeline there. And again, from this window, I have the ability to download or share the recording in the same way that I showed you previously. Now again, up at the top of this window, the top right-hand corner, what I'm able to do is select uh, these checkboxes, which allow me to see the activity as well as the roster for this conference as it was recorded. The activity is shown by default. That's what you see down at the bottom of this window here. The roster is not enabled by default, but if I enable it, what it does is it showed me, shows me a list of people who were in this meeting, as well as any of the events associated with those people. So it's a very useful recording interface. And again, anyone who views this recording would potentially be able to say that, see that same information via their web browser. Thank you for your time today. We welcome your comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at Avaya Mentor. For more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.